Stereochemistry is one of those topics within organic chemistry that I think is part of the reason that the topic gets such a bad reputation. Um, people find it really hard, I think, to you know, visualize these structures in their brain and you know, uh, like be able to tell whether it's an R or an S or appreciate the difference. It can be really hard to keep things straight. But luckily, ChemSketch has some tools in it that is really helpful and to uh, enhance your studies and be able to visualize things much more effectively. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm a marketing communication specialist here at ACD Labs, and I want to talk to you today about um, stereochemical tools in, in ChemSketch. Uh, there's a lot of options in there. It's really helpful, particularly if you're somebody who's struggling with this and some of your uh, organic chemistry homework, and I think that these tools can make these things um, much more understandable, much more, more approachable. So let's get right into things. Okay, so let's go through some of the most basic tools to begin with. Uh, so first we're just going to do a simple carbon-carbon bond with some hydrogens here. There is, of course, no chirality here, but we have the up stereo bond uh, tool that it can be accessed through this part of the panel. By the way, this like area right here is where we're gonna do most of our work today. This is where most of the stereochemistry related um, tools can be found. Um, then we have the down stereo bond uh, tool right here. Um, that shows the hashed bond. So this is the bold one, this is the hashed one. And then we can go back to our normal bond right here. So this is our uh, little th 3D configuration. Obviously this is in chiral at this point because uh, they're all the same atoms um, all in every direction. So let's add in a hydrogen here, an oxygen here, and a fluorine here. And this is, of course, the most obvious and most you know, simple way that you can create a chiral a molecule. And this is probably what most people will be doing most of the time. But um, this is, of course, you know, ChemSketch, and we really believe in giving you a lot more tools than what you uh, need for those simple applications, but go into the more advanced ones in addition. So one of the ones that we have here, for example, is the undefined stereo bond uh, here that if you're, for instance, working on some sort of like natural products uh, project. This is something that you can use to show that there is some stereochemistry in a given location, but you don't know exactly know what it is. For example, not used all the time, but um, something you have access to. There's a few other more exotic bonds that are being uh, hidden in here too, that if you want to use those. One that is really useful though for I think a lot of people is the set to R and set to S um, configurations. Maybe you uh, know that you want to have an R molecule, but you don't know whether this is R or S off the top of your head. You go to the set to R and you can click right here and it will set that as the um, R configuration and that you can see that you know, there in the way that it's, it's laid out. Uh, you can have set to S as well. So that also is giving you the correct con you know, configuration here that the OH is going into the page and that that's how um, this be laid out here. So that is something that you know. And then also you can use this button to generate the stereo descriptors. So you press that and it tells you that it's an S configuration as of right now. So that's really easy that you can um, uh, you know, do that is if you have a particular structure that you need to fi figure out whether it's R or S, you just draw it in here click that button and you have that little blue S that pops out and will tell you um, what is going on. Something to note uh, though that um, the I often use the clean structure button to uh, clean the layout of a molecules that I, I am um, I, I create in ChemSketch. Um, one thing to note though, is that it doesn't really work that well for um, 3D structures or stuff that has a stereochemistry that's associated with it. It often kind of looks a little bit wonky like this. Um, but one thing that you can do is use 3D optimization with room, yeah, you, this comes up, don't worry about it. Um, here, so yeah, you get a couple of warnings that, that pop up. This doesn't look as nice in two dimensions, but when you start moving it around and using the 3D dimension mover, you can see things a little bit more clearly and you can eventually maybe try and get into a configuration that kind of shows uh, you know, what you want. Um, that's actually not a bad one right there. You can kind of get a bit of a sense of the 3D feeling for it, but I, I find that the, the actual sort of moving around itself is the easiest way to visualize it. We're gonna see a more advanced version of that in a little while, 
but this is a really um, useful way in kind of like everyday use and that you can turn around um, fairly large molecules in this and get uh, a view of how things are laid out. Um, now, beyond this, we have some other uh, options in terms of laying out different molecules. Um, we can, for example, with this layout as of right now, um, everything looks flat, um, but we can actually use this to um, you know, see the uh, you know, names of the, the molecules as well and, and determine the uh, stereochemistry that way. So we can click here, generate name from structure. Um, this one, of course, is not you know, chiral at the moment. Um, it's not seeing any chirality here, so that's why we don't get anything there. But if we go back, we can pull out the down stereochemistry there. Uh, let's change that to a hydrogen so that it's actually chiral here. And we can then generate name from structure and we have that R that's given to us here so that that is, you know, we, we know that now this is an R configuration of the molecule. We can change the, the structure uh, and have things, um, actually let's do it with um, this one here. Maybe we show that one as flat, um, something along those lines. I don't know if that'll flip things, but let's generate a name based on that. It's R once again. Um, but let's actually, let's actually try and uh, flip it around. So, yeah, so it'll update when you when you change it. Um, now, if you are just changing the structure, the name won't update automatically uh, as, as you're changing it, but you can always regenerate the name and you'll get one over top of it. Um, but so yeah, you just you know, create them again and again. So that's just something that you should be aware of as you're as you're doing that. And it's not gonna be fixed, you know, over, over time. But anyway, that's something to be aware of. Now, th there are ways in which you can display things that will sort of confuse it. Um, so for example, let's do, a little mistake. Uh, let's do this one right here and create a name for this. And yeah, so incorrect configuration definition. So basically what this is telling us right here is that it doesn't know what stereochemistry we're, we're looking for in this because this is obviously like we have two of them that are going into the page. So it's a little bit unclear. Um, but this is something that you, if you're getting this um, configuration, if you're getting this this warning, maybe try a different configuration, sort of move things around, uh, and you might be able to get um, a better answer. So let's go here, let's do that, uh, and then let's generate a name from it. Okay, now it's figured something out for it. So there's the, the, it'll be able to tell a lot of it, it'll try its best, um, but if you're getting that warning, it, it does mean that it, there's something going on right now that it can't tell the stereochemistry that you're trying to communicate. So just um, make sure that you try to simplify things or work with the, the software to make it a little bit more clear as to uh, the, the, your intended configuration. Now, what if you have the name, but not the structure? Um, can the software do this? And the answer is, yeah, you get this. Uh, you just uh, click the text box that is um, that has the, the name in it using the text feature right here. And then you can generate a structure from that using this button up at the top. Now you get uh, these numbers uh, that are attached to it too. Um, I don't like them as much, so I tend to, to remove them, but if you want them, that they're, they're there for you. Um, so that's nice. And so that, that is uh, one of the other options that you can do depending on where, where you're going and what you're coming from. Um, now the uh, hydrogen here is attached to the carbon. It's not shown in this structure, but it's sort of assumed that it's going into the back of the page, um, which is a, a pretty normal convention with a lot of uh, hydrogens that they just uh, get, uh, you know, pushed to the to the back. They, they don't get the respect that they deserve. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's something that you can be, um, you, you'll, you'll see sometimes if you're trying to generate the structures in this way. Okay, and then lastly, I wanna show you a the the more advanced version of the 3D viewing because I think there the this tool here the 3D viewer is uh, really neat and is really helpful for um, seeing the 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 structure more holistically and, and getting a really you know, in depth view as to how things look. 
Um, this layout here, we have the black background and the, the, the atoms. Here we can um, rotate things in three dimensions by using these tools. Now, should note that the 3D viewer is slow uh, relative to a lot of other things that happen in ChemSketch. ChemSketch is generally, a, I think, a pretty fast program. Things happen you know, more or less you know, instantaneously as you are doing things. Um, this is uh, going to be the one area that it takes a little bit more time for it to figure things out. So if it is giving you some attitude, uh, be patient. It's not just you know some problem with your computer, for example. Um, it, it happens pretty frequently. Um, now we can do the stick model here. It is uh, maybe it'll show things. Yeah, we have that. We have different views. So that's balls and sticks. We have space fill. We have viewing things. Um, yeah, so we have all of that. Now, if we go ahead and we do the three optimization here, um, we're often going to see the hydrogens pop out too, because that was something that is important in doing the three D optimization that you see these in space and that it, it computes those in space. So that's something that you should uh, you'll be aware of too. That's a way to get them if that's something that you are looking for in it, uh, and you can see that layout. But we can actually, I, I prefer the. Um, the ball and stick view in order to see the stereochemistry the most clearly. Um, so this is a little bit uh, blocked right here. So I'm just gonna turn it a little bit and then you can uh, hopefully see things a little bit more clearly. Okay, that's that looks pretty good. Yeah, that, that is a pretty clear configuration that you can uh, look to see wh where the different groups align up to each other. But w one function that is actually really useful is the invert center one. And this is for inverting the R and S configurations. So when we click this here, we will go from the, I believe it's a um, S configuration as of right now, um, but we can go to the uh, R configuration when we use this tool. So yeah, we've, we have uh, flipped it around uh, here, which is which is good. Um, but then you also have access to uh, setting colors to you. So there's lots of things that you can do in terms of um, changing the way in which uh, everything looks. I actually prefer the, um, the grayish background, uh, not quite as heavy as the black. Um, so that's something that you can do as well. And uh, if you wanna ha do a lot in terms of uh, Looking at molecules, there are lots of options here that you have access to in order to kind of get, you know, everything that you want in terms of having your molecule looking great. But I think that that'll be it for today. Actually, one last thing to, to mention. We can go back here and see our uh, molecule once again in regular form. If we want to switch back, I don't want to get just stuck into that 3D view. This is a lot harder to draw the molecules that way. But anyway... That'll be it for today. Hopefully that was useful to you. That should probably be um, useful for most people. In most cases, when they're doing stereochemistry, there is a lot more in here that you can do if you have more uh, advanced questions. Let me know in the questions and I can hopefully try and answer those for you. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for me today. And thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if this content was useful to you. And I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for your time.